So one very important aspect that makes organization handles projects differently is the organizational structure. Let's discuss here the most common organizational structures and how they handle project management. So let's start by the first organization structure, which is called the functional organization structure. In this structure, we have the CEO, the chief executive officer, or the operations manager, and he's on top of the organization. And there are uh, different multiple departments or sections, functional sections, and each section is or department is headed by its functional manager. Each functional manager has his own staff reporting to him in the department. So in this kind of organizational structure, we usually assign project management to the department heads. So we form a team of the department heads and we ask them to manage to coordinate the project that we want to launch. So every functional manager will bring on his staff to work in the project and we do the project in this way. This way of handling projects in this organization structure is extremely bad as you can tell. For instance, there is no clear line of responsibility. If the project failed, then we're not sure who to blame. Is it the finance manager or is it the IT manager? Actually, each functional manager will try to throw the blame on the other functional managers. So there is no clear line of responsibility. There is also a burden that is thrown over the department heads. They have their important and their current job, and you ask them to do an extra job by managing this project. Uh, the same as well goes for the staff. The staff are working on their daily work and on their daily uh, operations in the department and suddenly they have tasks to do for the project. So this is a very uh, lousy and a very unsuitable environment to handle a project. Now let's move on to another organizational structure that we call the weak matrix organizational structure. In this organizational structure, we will ask the department heads to uh, to relieve themselves from the project management efforts, and we will pick one of the staff, one who we think that he is capable, that he has some experience. We will ask him to uh, coordinate or expedite the project, and uh, that's why he's called the project coordinator or the project expediter. So we have created a clear line of responsibility. We have assigned this uh, staff to handle the coordination and expediting of the project. So people now know where to go for information on project. And he is uh, responsible for coordinating and he is responsible for following up on the project. So this is one positive advantage of the weak matrix. But Again, there are lots of disadvantages. For instance, this guy is a coordinator. He's not a manager, so he's not empowered enough to manage a project. He's only coordinating and expediting the project. And he has also his daily operations, his daily work. And you throw over him uh, other tasks of project coordination, so this will not be a pleasant situation for him. Other staff as well are working on their daily operations and they are now requested to handle other project work. So it's not really the uh, uh, ideal environment to handle projects in, but for sure it's more suitable than the functional organizational structure. So why do we call this organizational structure a weak matrix? Because the one who is responsible for coordinating the project is not empowered enough, so he's weak. And for the staff, the staff now has to report to two persons. The staff now has to report for their functional manager and to report uh, to the project coordinator or project expediter. And let's here uh, indicate that there's a difference between project coordinator and project expediter. Usually a project coordinator has some authority to make some decisions in the project but the expediter has no authority at all. He's just following up 
on the project tasks. So let's move on to a better organizational structure, which is the balanced matrix. In the balanced matrix, we pick up one of the experienced uh, people working in uh, a department and we ask them to manage the project. So we assign them officially as a project managers and we ask them to refrain from their daily operations and work full time as project managers for this project until the project ends. And after the project ends, they will go back to their daily operations and to, to their uh, daily work in the department that they were uh, working in. So uh, from the project management perspective, the situation is even uh, better. Now we have a dedicated project manager, a clear line of responsibility, and the project manager has uh, some authority to make the proper decisions in the, uh, in the project. Uh, that's why we call it the balanced matrix. So now the staff reports to two managers, to their functional manager and to their project manager. So uh, the authority is balanced between the functional and project manager. But this might create some conflict in priorities. Again, we still have some disadvantage, uh, like the staff have their own operations, their own daily work, and you throw some project work over them. So this is again not a pleasant situation for the staff. The project manager as well will try not to make strong decisions that might affect him after the project has ended because after the project has ended the project manager will go back as normally to his operations and to his daily work. So let's move on to another type of organizational structure which is the strong matrix. In the strong matrix, we create a new department that is called the PMO, the Project Management Office. In this department, we will hire professional project managers, educated and professional project managers to be a full-time dedicated project managers for the projects that we launch in the organization. So whenever we have a project in the organization, we assign one of these project managers to handle and manage this project. And when this project ends, the project manager gets back to his home, which is the PMO. So a lot of advantages appear here. The project managers are educated, are trained, are probably certified. They work full time as project managers and they have a greater level of authorization. And that's why we call it the strong matrix. Actually, the project manager in this organizational structure has more power than the functional managers and uh, it might happen that functional managers report to project managers in a project but here appears one disadvantage what if we don't have projects in the organization or we have limited number of projects in the organization what about these project managers they are taking big salaries and they are doing nothing in this situation so you have to be careful when you use this type of organization. You have to be sure that you have a good number of projects and that you really need project managers to handle these projects. Let's move on to even a better organizational structure, which is the projectized organizational structure. In the projectized organizational structure, we will separate the projects in the organization and each project is considered an independent entity. So the project manager has uh, full authority on the project. All the staff are working for the project. The loyalty is uh, for the project and people even get assigned to work in the project. We usually contract the people to work in the project and when the project ends they usually leave the organization so the project managers in this organizational structure usually report to the ceo or the operations manager directly we don't have functional managers if we have functional managers then there will be functional managers that are specific to the project and that uh, will be and those functional managers will be reporting to the project 
manager. And this is considered the most sophisticated structure for project management. The last one here is an organizational structure that you might one day come up with. So you might be working in a strong matrix organizational structure and you have the PMO and project managers working on internal projects in the organization. But for specific projects, you want to give independence to these projects. So you hire project managers and you hire staff for this project on temporary basis and you give them you give them the independence that you want and project manager will be reporting to the chief executive officer or to the operations manager directly. So what you have done is actually that you have uh, come up with a composite or hybrid, we call it composite or hybrid organizational structure. This table here explains all about it. So we have all the organizational structures that we've talking about. We have the functional, we have the matrix, which consists of three types, weak matrix, balanced matrix, and strong matrix. And we have the projectized uh, organizational structure. These are the characteristics for each organizational structure. For instance, project manager's authority in the functional uh, organizational structure is little or none. In the weak matrix, it's limited because the project manager is called actually a project coordinator and has limited power, project coordinator or project expediter, as we explained earlier. In the balanced matrix, the project manager's authority becomes low to moderate since he's really uh, appointed now as a project manager, but only to manage the project for this time. And when the project ends, he gets back to his normal uh, operational uh, work. In the strong matrix, we have the PMO, and the PMO is giving enough power to the project managers, so the level of uh, the power is moderate to high, while in the projectized organizational structure, the project manager has high to almost total authority on his project. What about resource availability? In the functional organizational structure, Resources gave just little time to their projects, so little or none. In the weak matrix, they gave more time, so but it's still limited time to the project. In the balanced matrix, there's a project manager, and the project manager has some authorization, so resources have to give some low to moderate uh, time to their projects. In the strong matrix, they give more, so resource availability is moderate to high. In the projectized environment, resources give almost all the time to their projects. Who controls the project budget? In the functional organizational structure, the functional manager uh, controls the project budget. Uh, so is the situation in the weak matrix organizational structure. In the balanced matrix organizational structure, the project budget gets controlled by both, by the project manager and the functional manager. In the strong matrix and in the projectized matrix, the project manager controls the project budget. What is the project manager's role? In the functional and weak matrix, the project manager plays a part-time role. In the balanced matrix, he's uh, fully assigned and he works full-time on his project until the project ends. In the strong matrix and in the projectized uh, environment, he works full-time on his project. Do we assign project management administrative staff in the functional weak matrix and balanced matrix, we might assign part-time administrative staff to the project. In the strong matrix and projectized, we assign full-time administrative staff to the project.